Okay, you got the Blind Guy YouTube channel. This is going to be part two. And we're going to show you how to hook your mower deck back up on the front and how to do the adjustments. And then we're going to go back and show you how to, we're going to put the belt on. Uh, we ran out of time on the, uh, on the video there. But uh, it's a fairly simple process. Like we were showing there, as far as putting the belt on, I'm going to show you that right quick because that part of the video got cut off. Take and uh, put your ratchet right in here and pull. And if you go backwards, you can see it right there. Turn it backwards like this. Or like this. I think it's more like, put your handle like right there. And that lets the tension off. And then when you go to put it back on, well, no, actually it's back. No, you pull on it like this. And that lets the tension off. And that'll give you enough tension to hook it back up on your belt up there. So if you need to, and your diagram's right here on the deck, by the way. So if you need to loosen that belt, uh, let the tension off you put your ratchet right there and pull just like that put your belt up on the v pulley up there as you can see got it up on there like that and then just let it slide back and it self tightens and make sure everything is on there take a look while you're there make sure all your pulleys and stuff didn't nothing jumped off even over here on these pulleys back here which looks like this one may have jumped off. Yeah. Yeah, that one's off. Those over there are on. So we're going to put this belt. I didn't get it up on the uh, pulley down there. And then we're going to come around here to the front and show you how to do this front back here. <clears throat> now she's on there where she's supposed to be. Let's get the light and show you. Yeah. Now it's on that pulley where it's supposed to be. And everything else is lined up good. And one thing you want to watch for when you're doing this, to make sure your belt there is in front of the grease fit and, and not in behind. I think that's why it had jumped off and I, or fell off and it, it got behind there. I noticed while I go it was behind there. I always recheck. Now we're moving up front. I'm going to show you how we do this up here. Got the jack jacked up. And don't get under your lawnmower. I'm not going to put any jack stands under this one. But don't get under it. We're staying out from under it. And we're showing you what we're doing. Right here, we've already tightened this one up some. But you take this nut and loosen it up just like this one. And get a different angle. And the magic number on this mower, mower is an inch and three quarters. Well, you got this thing jacked up. Turn your wheels just like that. And get you a wrench. Get you a three quarter inch wrench like this. And if you got the luxury of a ratchet type, get your ratchet type like this. The magic number is measured from that point. Measure from this point here where the nut is to the end of the shaft. On this mower, it's an inch and three quarters. So my nut, the nut was here. Take your lock nut and all the way loose when you disassemble this thing. I've already started this one back down. Put it right here. Run this nut down till it snugs up against this. Then take your three quarter inch wrench and turn this clockwise like that to tighten it up until you get an inch and three quarters. 
And this is why you turn your wheel this way so you can get your head this direction and look to measure. And go ahead and measure it because you want these things even. Now measure yours on your lawnmower first before you start. Now I'm gonna set it up there and I'm gonna put the one behind the nut right there. If I can hold my hand steady. Uh, and right there is the inch and three quarters with the light shining where you can't hardly see. And that's how you measure it anyway. Let's see, now the light's gonna. Okay, just like this. Put it on the one. It's an inch and three quarters. And let's see. There we go. Maybe I can do it like that. I've been working on this thing while I'm getting a little bit tired. My hands are shit. My arms are tired from shaking. All right, there you go. Put the nut, put your one on there and come up to inch and three quarters and see if that's not what you got. I'm gonna hold it steady right there. I don't know why there's so much light shining there. It's not that way on the off camera. But anyway, I don't know why the light won't stay up there. There's the inch and three quarters. From the nut out to the end there. Still don't have the light like I want it where I can really get a good shot. From here, at my fingernail, to right out there on the end of that bolt should be an inch and three quarters. That's what you're looking for. And if not, adjust this nut till you get an inch and three quarters. Then take this one and tighten it down. And that's a lock nut, by the way. And there's an inch and three quarters. Right there. And that's why you turn the wheels where you can see that. And then come back and measure your other side. Take your wheels and turn them back around the other way. Stout from under your lawnmower. Um, the bumper here is high off the ground anyway, right here. It's like that high, but I've got it jacked up pretty good. I didn't want to use jack stands, but I've got enough sense to stout from under it. And you should do the same. Or if you can, because if you put a jack stand there, you don't have enough room to turn your wheels, or even out here on this end, you don't have a jack stand high enough. Just stay out from under the darn thing. It's not that heavy, but you don't want to hurt yourself. And then we're going to measure this one and see if it's an inch and three quarters. I think I already got that one. And measure right there. And I can see that inch and three quarters. <clears throat> Looks good. And then tighten your nut, lock nut down. Now, one thing I want to mention, this lawnmower had pins in here and I put bolts in here and I made me a lock nut out of a regular nut by putting it in a vise and squeezing it slightly out around. But this thing right here would just flop around all the time with that one little pin that used to be in there in the cotter pin that used to be in here. So I put bolts and washers, took up the slop. Now it doesn't move. But the problem is when you're doing this work, um, when you first start doing it, you got to put your nut up in here first and then work your bolt through to get it through here and then tighten it as you go. Once you get these in here tight like that, 
and up the same over here. Same thing over here. Once you get your nut put in place, then take your bolt. Well, go ahead and feed your bolt through these pieces of metal till it's flush and slide the nut up in here and then tighten it up and then hold this with the wrench and then take this and turn it and tighten it up. And then that makes it really secure. Those little pins that you spin here didn't hold well. But once you do that, wrong size. And this says, these little wrenches say off and on. I like that. Just taking the, tighten this up till you get it down there snug. Just like that. The weird thing is when you first start without here on the end, the angle of this bolt is a little bit pointed up like I was talking about earlier. It's, it's pointed upwards. Um, and as you tighten it, it actually lifts the deck down here up. As you tighten that first nut back there in the back, it actually lifts it up and then it starts to straighten this out, pointing more horizontally. When you first start on this thing, yeah, it's pointing up here. Um, and I don't know why it's like that, but it's, it's just, that's, that's just what you gotta do. And we're gonna tighten these nut, lock nuts up and go from there. And go ahead and get your wrench on here so you don't accidentally turn that. Um, when this when this lock nut meets out, when you don't want to turn it and by accident and throw your adjustment out and do the same on this side. And if you got a short wrench like I do, you can take it and just set it right up against the frame right there like that. Move the light over. Just set it up against the uh, frame and that'll hold it in place. And then you're, you're tight here. Then just give it kind of a little bump. And then you can get your other wrench and tighten it down. You can take your wrench like this, put it, put it on there. And then take these two like this and this is a method I learned a long time ago. Take your two wrenches and squeeze. <clears throat> and when you squeeze, that pulls this one around and it should be tight. But I'm gonna try to get a little extra on that. <clears throat> Make sure it's tight. <laughs> try to get them kind of close. See there, it's too far away at that angle. Let's see if we can get that. Yeah, so that's too far away at this angle. Flip your wrench over and it gets it in there closer. Uh, this one here, if you turn it, it's gonna be further away too, like that. So put them in there where you can get them in there as close as you can. Um, even now right here, let's see if this will work. Right there, I see that's too close. So you're gonna have to flip one wrench over and squeeze. <clears throat> And we'll recheck those later. Okay. Make a fine adjustment right there. Just turn that a little bit so your wrench can bite down on this uh, bar here. And that way it can uh, help you hold your wrench and go ahead and tighten them down. You may as well do this like this because the impact you're just gonna mess up your threads of your, um, don't use the impact on your lock nut. Uh, mess up your threads on that. And then I got this on here and that's pretty tight. And of course we're gonna recheck that with the other wrench. And I think it's getting pretty close to where <clears throat> where we uh, need it. Gonna have to put that one right there. And we'll put this one right here. That's the wrong way. Anyway, you get the idea. It's tight. I mean, I got that one right there. And 
as tight as it needs to go. All right. I think that's all of it. So, we got the front end done there. Get the light out of the way. Let's do some checks. We'll let the, let the jack down. Get the jack handle, wherever I put it. It's over here on the side. Turn your wheel straight so you'll be ready to go. You can always can go back and retighten those. See, they, they point straight now. <laughs> like I said, once you get them going. But when you go to put that thing up there, it's got all that tension of the mower deck, the weight of the mower deck. It just don't want to... Let me show you. <clears throat> See, now that we're done, they're pointing straight out. But if you drop these bolts out first, like I did here and here, or in your case, you'll have pins. If you drop these out, immediately that deck will uh, pull backwards. And once it pulls backwards, then these are pointing up and then you can't get it back on. So I've done that in a quick hurry to get it off of the mounting points. Just take the nuts there loose or your pins. Once you do that, that deck rolls backwards. It pulls tension backwards. And these will start pointing upwards to try to get it back on there, and you can't do it. That's why you got to take this uh, adjustment out all the way to the end. And then it'll reach the hole over here to get it put back in. And then that's that there will help you get it put back in place. But, yeah, I've just done a shortcut, and really you shouldn't because you wind up having to do that work anyway. I did try to put it back up there with, uh, out, uh, doing the, without taking the adjustment out to the end point, and I couldn't get my holes to line up over here on this side. I couldn't get the holes to line up. I was like a good half inch or inch off away because I had this right where it is now. So that looks good. So when you get done, like I said, we're going to clean up this uh, pigtail here, plug that back in right there. We're going to clean that up. I'm going to hook the battery back up. When you're done, if you're like me, I had to tow this thing to the shop and this is how you tow it. You tow it with this pin pulled all the way out right here and lift rod up to engage transmission, lift rod out and down to release transmission. So to put it back in gear, you pull on it slightly, raise it up, and make sure she goes all the way in there. And it should run just fine. I believe that's all we have. <clears throat> And of course we uh, double checked our uh, belt from the engine to the transmission. Be careful back there around those fins, like I said, uh, when you're putting that belt on, just take your time gently and get it on there and run it through. And go ahead and impact your bolt on your PTO back up in there. I actually went and done mine on low and Depending on how much air pressure you have, uh, just don't over tighten it and break it off or something like that. Just I got mine on low and tightened it up. Then I put it on high and hit it a couple licks, bup, bup, bup. And I have a small air compressor, so there's not a lot of volume there to really hurt anything. So uh, let's see. I think that's it. Everything looks good. I'm, I'm looking at it. We've Got everything put back together. Um, the belt's on where it's supposed to be. And then we're going to hook the battery up and the PTO cable. We're going to hook the wiring up for that and get these tools up out of the floor. And once you're done, go ahead and take your mower outside. Give it a little test run. Make sure everything works. Um, I don't know how late it's getting. 
Looks like the sun may be going down. I haven't put any more wood in my little fire. It's gone. She's about burnt down. I had several chunks in there and it's burnt since uh, oh, about 12 o'clock. Something like that. But uh, we look like we got it going. Give you kind of an update here about the uh, what we've done. We decided to put this back over here for now. <laughs> I had that and these chairs sitting right over here at the doorway one day and backed over them, the one chair with the Kubota mower. So I said, well, we're going to get that stuff put out of the way. And I decided to just put this back over here and put the toolbox back on it. And I got the chairs sitting over here. Because now if I set them over here where I had them, they're going to be out in the middle of my floor. Or actually, I could set them right over here. Right there would be a good place for them right there. And decided I want to put this battery box back under there. The battery charger back under there because of this uh, mount for a grinder. If you want to put a grinder on that, that's what that is. Oh, we got that. But that, I don't want to put that out in the shed and let it weather get to it. So we're going to keep it in here for the time being. I believe we will take these chairs over here. And set them over here out of the way. Right there. And let's see what else we got to do. Uh, we got to pick up some tools. We got the chainsaw down here. We got that one running the other day. That one hadn't been run in about four years. And this one hadn't either. Um, we will tell you what you need to do. Uh, I've got this other one. I want to try to crank it up. Um, we're going to talk about this a minute. <clears throat> and set this echo blower down. By the way, these chainsaws here are Saks Dahmer. They're probably, I don't know, 30 years old or so. But before you try to start in something like that and I pulled on this nose is real hard to pull. First thing you want to do is take your breather off or wherever your spark plug's at. Mine happens to be right here underneath this and you want to take that off and get you some oil. Um, I used a regular bar oil and drop me a few drops down the cylinder head with the spark plug out. And that made it rope pull easy. She's going to smoke a little bit once she cranks off, you know. But that's what you need to do to get that uh, to pull easy. Because it's going to be dry in there because it's set for four years. I haven't used this and since I bought my other chainsaw. This in here has got a little issue with it. And... Uh, But it's pretty simple. I don't like how they got these things on them here to take this out. I don't like that at all. Now what I had to do is use uh, this wrench here. <laughs> it's like a little wrench there of some sort to get down in there to get them things started and then take a regular screwdriver and pop them out. Okay. All right. Let me go find the spark plug wrench. Okay. As you can see, we got our spark plug out. Take spark plug wire off to get spark plug out. And take a little bit of oil. I'm going to kind of tip her over there just a little bit at an angle. Put a few drops of uh, oil down in, the, in there. One, two, three. Whoa, that's plenty. Probably too much. And then hold this out of the way and pull this start rope ever so gently. So that'll help lubricate down in there. And before this right here was so hard to pull, just like on the other, you get some oil in there and it helps it. Alright, put your 
spark plug. Oh, I'm going to check for spark too while we're at it. Put the spark plug back in. Make sure you turn your saw to the on position. This one down is stop, up is on. I leave them on because I forget to uh, turn them on sometimes. <laughs> then we'll check for spark. Which of course I can't see it. And put it right down there. Turn the light off. Turn that one off and see if that'll help see the spark. I'm not seeing it for some reason, but it should have spark. Uh, do this right here first and check for spark. And uh, yes, stop is down. Might need to flip your switch a couple times. Get the cobwebs out of it. There's so much light in there, I can't hardly see that down in there. Okay, I turned my other light off. Well, I can see. Oh, there it is. She jumped. She jumped fire. Come across to the head there. <clears throat> so she still got fire. So, I'm going to take that out. Put the spark plug back in. These old Sykes Dahmer chainsaws are old and they run pretty good. I haven't had this in crank, so I don't know how it's gonna do. Put your spark plug in there and snug it. Okay, so that's what you need to do before you crank something up. Um, this one doesn't have any gas in it, and I don't think I have any down here at the shop, but we're so we're not gonna crank this one up right now. But I thought I'd just give you folks a little input on that. Um, this saw is a 116 Sex Dahmer. And this other one over here, I did not put fresh gas in it. That's this one right here. And did the same thing with her. Took the air filter off, the cover off, pulled the spark plug, put a few drops of oil in it. And this is Sex Dahmer 123. And she cranked right up on that four year old gas, maybe five years. And I reused this thing the other day and she run pretty good. We got another one back there we use them for parts. You can see the orange air. Um, the uh, shaft messed up on it and a fly flywheel key and all broke and we managed to get it apart and use it for a while. And then it broke one day on its own and it just decided it wasn't gonna run anymore and, Something was in there clanking around, and when I took the cover, talking about that right there, took the cover off of it, the nut was laying inside the cover, and it was just in there flopping around. It broke the rest of the way off. Um, I had a hard time getting that uh, flywheel off of that one. So when we did this one, this one wasn't crank, and it needed a new coil. So we salvaged the coil off of that one, put it on this one, took the motor mounts off of that one, <clears throat> and put it on the one we just had right over there, because I noticed that the uh, every time I was going to cut, the the whole saw body was just moving, and I'm like, why is this thing moving? And my hand was hitting the uh, the emergency bar break up there where uh, the bar is, and I was hitting it, and I was like, why am I hitting that? And finally figured out the motor mounts were bad. So we salvaged motor mounts off of that one um, and put on that one and the coil off of that one on this one. Let's see what size chainsaw this used to be. Uh, that was a Sax Dahmer 119. This is a good aluminum pull rope cover. The sad thing is it won't fit on that 116 over there. And it's plastic the other one is and one of the holes is goofed up and i'm having a hard time keeping it bolted together i think this one is metal or aluminum but there's all she's left of that one motor mounts out of this and on the other one
here's the old flywheel part of it right there. Let's see. There's the old coil. Oh yeah, the shaft. Right there's the shaft that broke off. The, the where you put the nut on. But uh, and I got on YouTube and watched the guy. And what he done, he took his uh, saw and held it upside down by the handle and wrapped the, uh, put, put his nut back on the shaft there and wrapped it with a ball peen hammer about 13 times. And it went pop and that flywheel just popped right off. And I watched that and I said, you know what? That guy's got Saxon armor chainsaw. He's over in Germany doing this now. And I'm like, well, these saws are made in Germany. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try that. So when I went to do this 123 that way, that's what I did. Found that video, tapped this one a few times and it came off. And I think that's why the uh, the other one over there broke. I couldn't get the flywheel off. I took it to the saw shop. They called me and said they couldn't find their puller and they couldn't get it off. And I figured what happened, they tried so much on it. I tried so much on it. And it made that little shaft so, so much tension on it that it finally broke. When I probably could have done that simple solution, but we salvaged the coal and the motor mounts off of that one anyway, so it all worked out good. But this one right here, this 123, it cranked up real easy and ran wonderful the other day. But you talk about heavy. These are some heavy chainsaws. And we got that. Since we don't have any gas, we're not gonna crank that one up. Uh, we don't have any down here. We have to go get some and mix it up. We're just gonna end this video right here. This is just a little extra inclusion on that. And uh, you know, four year old gas mixed with uh, oil, your uh, mix that you mix, and it's regular 87 octane. Uh, I may have put now that I think of it, I may have used non-ethanol gas in that, but I don't recall. You know, it's been four years ago. Uh, they may have not had that in it, but four years old. Pulled on a few times that and cranked right up, and I'm sure this one will do the same. It's got fire. Just get some gas unless it'll like a fuel line or something's clogged up or something. But we're going to get done here. Close up the shop. We're going to take this cup of cadet outside, and we're going to try to check it out real quick. As you notice, we don't have the other mowers in here. We got those outside and we're going to bring those back in. But I would like to clean up back here with the vacuum, clean some of that mess up. Maybe we'll do it another day. But this is part two. Part uh, one that I was doing, just as I was ending, it got cut off. And the way it does it on my megabytes on the device here, uh, it got cut off into two parts. So I decided to record the rest of this ending over and add these two things, talk about these saws a little bit and let you see, you know, they're that old and I still use them. Um, haven't used them in a while. I bought me a lighter weight saw to carry to do uh, smaller work because even this uh, 116 here is kind of heavy uh, for trimming and just cutting small trees down. So I bought me another saw that's lighter weight and it's got the easy start on it and it works really well. I like it and it's like, it weighs, I don't know, maybe five or 10, I don't know, five pounds at least, less than that one, maybe more than that. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the numbers, but it is a lot lighter. It's easier when you're trying to cut stuff up high and a little bit over your head where you shouldn't. But anyway, you got the Blind Guy YouTube channel. I hope you uh, got a lot of information out on how to do the PTO on this uh, saw. If you do, uh, excuse me, on this uh, lawnmower. If it does turn with you, just take it back down. And like I said, take your finger in there and turn it a little bit on top. And then be sure and put that washer back in. Get it set up in there and find your groove, hold it with one hand and put the bolt in with the other and turn a little bit. Go ahead and take your impact wrench and zip it on there. Cause if that thing slides down out of the, off of the uh, groove, the keyway, and the key slides out and it's off of it, then 
you got to line it back up again and start all over. Or if you turn it a little bit and put the bolt in and try to push it bolt in, it's not going to go up where it should be. So you got to have that thing, that PTO all the way up there where it should be and not let it drop, not even a fraction and get your bolt in there and grab your impact, go and zip it on up in there. And because I put the bolt in there, I was trying to turn it by hand and I'd let it slide down. And when I did, it mess, it mismatched the groove and the keyway together it was a mismatch. That's why I had to redo it. And, you know, you learn by your mistakes, but it wasn't that bad. I had to do it again, but wasn't that bad. But as always, hope you enjoyed the rest of your evening. You got the Blonde Guy YouTube channel and keep tuning in for the next episodes that we do, the next videos, because we've got some other things we want to do, depending on how cold it gets outside. And so we've got some more things we want to do here in the shop. So keep tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like button, share, and smash that subscribe button. And uh, have a nice rest of your day. And as always, thank you for watching. You got the Blonde Guide YouTube channel signing out and saying thank you. And one last look at the old Cub Cadet.